So we're going to talk about where I found this edge that uh, I was looking for for so many years. Um, and I and I missed this very obvious edge for so many years, even though it was hiding right there in plain sight. So if you look at what probably looks like a typical chart on a day that might seem rather slow or tedious, you probably won't notice much happening here. You're probably going to look for big opportunities to make big money, which is typical for most traders, right? Particularly new or struggling traders. If you were trying to build your own trading system, you might look at this chart and go, okay, well, there's really nothing to, to work with here because there's really not much of a trend going. There's really nothing specific here that might give me some indication that I can make a lot of money on a trade. So you'd probably pass this up and go hunt for something more dramatic or obvious to your eye as you're scrolling through charts, you know, in the middle of the night looking for opportunities. But this segment offers actually a lot of really good opportunities and they they're right there in front of us. All you got to know is know what to look for. And so I I started studying some certain things on on a chart like this and say, okay, something specific is happening at certain points. So what's going on? So what I figured out was that What we needed to find out was when the HFTs, when the quants, the money, the market makers, the big money, when they were doing their thing, how could I know when they are doing their thing? How could I know when they are going to manipulate the market and how can I profit from that? Okay, I don't definitely don't want to trade against them. So I started looking for evidence of these traders called momentum traders. Now, when I say momentum traders, momentum traders aren't looking to trade. And, and generally, momentum traders, by the way, are also triggered by, you know, uh, conditions in the market that trigger mechanical trading, okay? Meaning that these big supercomputers are typically going to be used for these momentum traders. If if you've heard buy low, sell high, uh, buy low, sell high, yeah, and vice versa. Um, that's very typical for what most of us would think of as trend trading. Um, and that's, that it seems logical. You want to buy it when it's cheap sell it when it's expensive. Momentum traders kind of think differently. Momentum traders logic is buy high, sell higher. Okay. So momentum traders don't look for a fixed amount of momentum or a percentage of the market. Momentum trading is all relative to the recent past conditions in the market. We definitely need for momentum traders to be active. We do need something of a trend, but because momentum traders will trade level to level inside of a trend, okay? So you can see here how we have a, a level and a level and a level and a level. Uh, keeping with the trend, but momentum traders are going to trade inside of a trend and they're going to try to capture small moves based on aggressive buyers and sellers bidding a price up or down by overwhelming one side of the bid-ask spread and setting off a strong move in one direction, usually temporarily over a short span. Okay, so let's let's study this. Let's see what's actually happening here, which, by the way, you look at this chart. 
if you just go pull up any chart, pull up a chart from today, and see if you can't find exactly what I'm showing you here, the same patterns that repeat over and over and over again. I kept seeing this, and I, I had this aha. Uh -huh. And I decided if this is regular, if this is that regular and that predictable, then it's got to be exploitable. This is an edge. And the edge is created by the big boys, the smart money, the, the, the momentum traders. So they're creating this edge by one. We get into an area where to you and me, price is channeling, right? Now, for us, that looks like the whole market has just decided, oh, it's boring, nothing's going on, we're all waiting for some special news event or something, and we just, we're just sitting around with nothing to do, right? But in truth, it could be the big boys buying or selling, doing it very quietly. So this could be an area of accumulation or distribution. For our purposes on trading these pullback trades, we don't really care what it is. We don't need to know what it is. We just know that it happens, and it's very important as it begins to set up an opportunity for us. So then we have where price starts to break outside of that channel that it's been in, okay? So the buying sentiment begins to increase, and typically it's with a lot of sudden bidding up in price. This sudden bidding up in price is what, what triggers these momentum traders. Okay, the HFTs, the, the market makers, you know, we all know that these are the guys that are prevalent in the markets, that are moving the markets, that are that are adding liquidity to the market so that we have something to trade. So these momentum traders begin buying up as much as they can, as fast as they can, and they're causing a sudden shortage. Well, what happens? You remember Trading is all about supply and demand, and it's an auction, okay? So if there's a shortage of something, what happens to price? If somebody starts buying up everything, then that means there's not much left of it, so that makes it more valuable, so it's going to go up. So we're going to be seeing prices being driven up over the short term. And then inevitably, these buyers are going to become exhausted. Momentum traders, before this price tops out, have already finished their trade. They jump in here. They take their profits here. And then wait for all of the other... All, us, idiot retailers that say oh it's a breakout look what price is doing i gotta jump in on this right we've all done it so you jump in right about the time goes and barrels over because there are no more buyers and the the uh, momentum traders have just now overwhelmed the market by dumping a whole bunch of contracts on there. Of course, they, they create the demand by creating this big push up, right? From all the buying they did here, got triggered. Okay, there's buying sentiment. I'm going to buy a bunch more here, and I'm going to dump it off here. And then price has nowhere to go but down, okay? Buyers begin to become exhausted. Momentum traders dump everything as fast as they can before all the buyers are gone. And then a sudden oversupply. Now, I kept seeing this. And, and if you don't believe me, look at a trading chart. 
Tell me if you don't see this pattern repeated over and over again. And if you can prove to me you don't see it, you and I need to talk. Because it happens regularly and consistently every day inside every market in every time frame. You just got to know what to look for. And if you know what to look for and you know where to look, you know what's likely to happen next, and that's an edge. Momentum traders having have created this edge by causing this unnatural increase in price. Now, one-minute charts. A lot of people just don't get it. How in the world can you trade one-minute charts? I I want to trade five minute, ten minute, fifteen minute charts, one hour charts. Well, here's my here's my logic on that. So think about a bouncing ball. Now, when a ball drops and hits support, which would be the floor you pretty much know what's going to happen right now, right? As soon as that bar, ball bounces, you pretty much know exactly what's going to happen. Now, except for the fact you just saw this video, in five minutes, in in 10 minutes, uh, you know, in any period of time after this bounce, where is this ball going to be? How do you know? What other influences might influence where that ball is going to be? I know with this information to expect this, right? But where it goes after that? With other influences involved, who knows? Okay? So the longer you're in a trade, the longer you're expecting to, uh, to get to a profitable position, the more speculative that trade becomes. Okay? The big boys... The smart money trades really fast. They create opportunities really fast. If you'll notice and study the liquidity that's provided by these big boys, it's a huge percentage of the amount of contracts or, or whatever um, traded in the markets. Huge percentage. What some say is 75%. But the actual time in the market, minuscule, tiny. Because they're all trading really fast. Because of all the other influences in the market. So when you think about it, we're not just watching the ball drop and bounce. We know from experience what to expect. If the ball floated softly like a feather or a snowflake, we know not to expect a big bounce, if any at all. If the ball were fired from a cannon, we know that the ball would likely not would likely get destroyed or go through the floor or whatever. So the floor is offering support, but at a different level for a different speeds or forces of the drop. Price does the same thing. So if you think about price like a, like a falling ball, whether it's going up or down, all we need to know is the measurements necessary to know what to expect next. Okay, so like for the ball, we need to know, you know, what's the ball made out of? Well, you know, is the substance hard or soft? Is the ball filled with air? 
sand, rubber, etc. What's the floor made of? Is it rubber? Is it concrete? Is it liquid? Is it wood? We're taking measurements so that we can anticipate what's likely to happen next. This is exactly what we're doing with our indicators. We're taking measurements of the ball and we're taking measurements of the floor. Okay? So the most important measurement is order flow. If you're not measuring order flow, that's like trying to trade with no hands or something. All right? So our first indicator and the one that kind of turned the corner for us is the speed tick. All right? So we're going to be measuring the rate at which the orders are going through, the rate at which these momentum traders are able to process these trades. Not, not place orders and have them resting orders. That's the level two stuff. What we're doing is we're, we're watching the time and sales and we're watching how these orders are being processed. And when they reach a speed that is unrealistic that retail traders have the ability to trade that speed, then we know it's a mechanical manipulation. And if it's a mechanical manipulation, it's likely has something to do with these momentum traders. So if we know that, we can measure it and look and and look for a specific rate at which exhaustion is likely to be setting in. So the byproduct of the uh, speed tick indicator was also an amazing indicator called the ricochet. So instead of speed of orders being processed, we also noticed that when we had an extreme acceleration, think of it like a drag racer. Maybe the drag racer doesn't get up to 220 miles an hour like an IndyCar, but the drag racer goes from 0 to 100 in 3 seconds. We also noticed that when that happened, it was a high probability that it was a mechanical manipulation that retail traders, you and me, guys that are sitting, you know, at home on a laptop, physically cannot place orders that quickly. Okay? We also have a really cool indicator called our pullback alert. So what are we doing with our pullback alert? We're reading not just how fast or how many, but how the ticks are coming into a bar. So if you're if you're looking at a at a static chart, you know, you're sitting there at night and you're trying to think, oh my gosh, how am I gonna figure out how to do this trading thing? And so you're looking at charts that aren't moving, right? I hate I hate these going to these webinars where these guys are showing you static charts and they go here. If you see this here and then you see this here and here, then you take a trade and then you're going to make a lot of money. Okay. It looks great on static charts. But what do you get? What, what information do you have in this bar? Now these are identical and there's only four pieces of information here. You got the high, the low, the open and the close. So the high, low, open, and close. That's it. Four pieces of information. So these two bars are exactly the same, right? But they're not. If you look at how the ticks come into these bars, it's very different. And the way the ticks are being processed or the orders are being processed makes a huge difference. And we can tell what's likely to happen next because of the way the ticks are coming into the bar. So this bar on the left, price goes up, the ticks come in, we hit the high, 
come back down, close with the bar. Nothing spectacular going on here. Nothing, nothing to give us any indication on what's likely to happen next. This other bar, the ticks come in, price goes up, hits the high, comes down, goes up, comes down, goes up, goes down. We've got what's called a churning action in price. It's obvious that the buyers and sellers are in disagreement here. Well, when you couple that with a strong potential for exhaustion, meaning that price has pulled, uh, you know, moved a long way with a lot of strong momentum, and the fact that the momentum traders want to buy high, sell higher, and get out, and that they're going to be dumping a bunch of assets back onto the market, and you see this churning action, you can pretty much count on prices about to do something specific. <coughs> Excuse me. And here's one of our newer indicators. All right. This is called our climactic volume indicator. It's kind of hard to see in this picture, but the way we're doing it is we're drawing a box around a bar when we have what's called climactic volume. Okay? So climactic volume, very simply, is saying that volume in the current bar is greater than X percent of the previous X bar. So for an example, the current bar volume has exceeded 300% of the average of the volume in the last 10 bars, as an example. When that happens, there's a very high likelihood that that's a manipulated bar. And if we know it's manipulated, we know that we can expect something specific to happen next. Okay. We also have something that when you add order flow and you add divergence to it, you have an amazing potential for setups. Okay. So we have one indicator called the McDiver, which uses our our divergence algorithm, which I promise you is the best divergence algorithm you'll ever find. And for those of you that don't know what divergence is, when when price, and this is a very oversimplified uh, image for you just so you can understand. When price is moving, it's very common for momentum say this would be a momentum oscillator, to move with it, okay? When they get out of sync with each other, meaning that momentum has changed directions before price has, this is a divergent condition. And when price and momentum get out of sync, Price will almost always try to catch up with momentum, okay? They usually run together. If they're not running together, you can expect price to try to catch up with momentum. Huge heads up. Now, why don't more people use divergence? It's harder to figure out. Typical divergence indicators draw backwards. They're they're lagging. You're gonna find that you you'll you'll have missed a lot of divergent conditions if, unless you have trained your eye over a long period of time to find them. It, if you look at a lot of charts and then you look at momentum oscillator, you can get easily fooled believing that they're running together, but in fact they're not. So a lot of people give up on divergence really easily, which is why I came up with this algorithm. So I don't have to train my eye. I don't have to figure out how to see it. I just let the indicator do it. So all we have now is on the open of the current bar, if the bar opens in a divergent condition, then we print an indicator above that bar. On the open of the bar, 
Okay, and that's where our decisions are made. Now, these two indicators worked so well for us, I actually decided, you know what? I'm going to add five more momentum oscillators. We take the MacDiver. The flash is based on the RSI. And then we've added five more. Okay, so that's our super D indicator. Basically, we're just going to print at the bottom or top of the bar how many oscillators are saying that they're divergent with price and that'll tell you which ones they are in the bottom uh, bar down here momentum and exhaustion this is our heads up this is tells us okay we're now breaking out price is moving we have a lot of uh, order flow, but we want to make sure that we measure momentum because exhaustion will always set in after a strong push in momentum. So a lot of you use, again, oscillators, momentum oscillators to determine if price is overbought or oversold. We do the same thing, except instead of having to use an oscillator, we just print it right where your eyes are already looking. When when price gets exhausted or is about to become exhausted, we're going to print an outline on the bar, on the current bar, to tell you if you have the other conditions in place for a trade setup, this is a good time for it to happen. Okay, we're also measuring momentum. Now, you may just look at this and go, okay, yeah, this is pretty obvious. There's pretty strong momentum here. It's amazing how often people will try to place a trade in here because they get a few of our other indicators pop up. I'm like, no, you don't want to trade in here. This is, this is channeling. This is sideways. This is not what we do. We want to measure momentum first. And then look for our other indicators. So we created this momentum indicator. And to be honest, I didn't think we needed it. But as soon as we introduced it, people got the aha. Aha! All I have to do is wait for the colors of the bars to go from black to a lighter color. Or whatever. I mean, these are user definable. You guys can define that however you want on your own system, but we go from black where momentum starts to a lighter color, and the lighter the color, the more imminent the exhaustion. Okay. And then we have our, our new indicator called the Naked Rockstar Zone, which is really just an indicator to help us stay out of those trades where exhaustion is not imminent. Okay. So the edge created by these momentum traders. So let's look at this. So up here, momentum indicators have created this unnatural increase in price. Unnatural meaning from this channel to suddenly and without any explanation, obviously it's not a news event, it's, it, there's, there's nothing specific going on in the market. Don't you ever just sit and wonder, well, why did price go from here to here in two minutes? When I couldn't go that far in an hour, I'm sitting here waiting, and then suddenly in two minutes, something happened. And price went from here to here. Why did that happen? So you have to know that it's an unnatural increase in buying sentiment. And it's a strong relative, again, it's all relative, increase in the, uh, um, the price of the uh, you know, movement in the previous part. 
So now we're getting into an overvalued area. These momentum traders, this is exactly what they want to do. They want to push price into this overvalued area and then dump it off when all the rest of us are going, oh, look, price is taking off. I got to get in on this. Right? It's called jumping in front of a freight train. And that's exactly what will then happen. They'll get out here. Then what ha what I call freight training often happens. And that means that the, the uh, retail traders will continue buying and and it'll have just enough energy to push it a little bit further. And then they can't push it anymore. There's nobody left to buy it up in here. You know? So the buyers have bid up and purchased most of the available assets at this price. They then, <coughs> excuse me, they force it up into this area. There were no more willing buyers. This price level has become exhausted. And at the same time, the momentum has shifted down. Okay? So this is what we call confluence. Our indicators, it's a very simple system. This is about as simple as it gets. This is an extremely powerful system. This dot right here, there are companies out there that sell entire trading systems with lots of squiggly lines and all kinds of stuff on their charts in order to do what we're doing with one dot. Okay? That's all you need to know is what's going on inside this bar. This little arrow is all you need to know to make a yes or no type decision. On the open of this bar is where we shorted this. On the open of this bar. Now, if this bar opens and then jumps up, I'll definitely short it up in here. I do that all the time. I love it when the bar opens and jumps because then I'll get filled up here when I short it. So let's see what that looks like. I'm actually, uh, I have this. Uh, in a bit here, I'm gonna do it this way. I have more control over the slider when I do it this way. Whoops, uh, I'll make it a little bit bigger. All right, so on the left, no indicators. I know there are a lot of you that say you don't need indicators to trade. Well, you're probably right, but it sure makes things easier. So let's just watch. Now, what I, one of the things I want you to see is when the indicators that indicate that a condition exists prints. There's no repainting. It's telling me right now. There's a strong probability that this bar is being manipulated because the orders are coming in real fast. There's also a churning action inside of this bar where the buyers and sellers are somewhat fighting with each other. Now we have a divergent condition, probably have an overbought condition, but I don't have it on this chart. And on the open of this bar, at the open of this bar, if possible, or better, which would be up here, we're going to sell this. And that's all we need. That's our edge right there. That's it. And watch and see how it happens over and over and over again. This could have been, here's a nice thing about what we're doing here, or what you're seeing on these charts. This could have been 10 years ago, or it could have been today. We're doing the same thing. When was this? This was actually a year and a half ago. This is exactly, it could have been today. We don't change what we're doing because it works. 
all they do is occasionally develop a new indicator or something in order to try to make it better, more efficient, more opportunities. Okay? Now, we absolutely have rules. I know, and a lot of people get really excited. Oh, I just want to buy the Rockstar because every time it prints, I'm going to sell it. And, and you, I mean, you can, but I wouldn't because rules will help you not take some losses. Now, there is no perfect indicator. There is nothing perfect. Look at that. Okay, so we keep pushing, but we don't have a trade. We don't have a trade until there. Now we have a trade. This is all we needed. That's our edge right there. We have a strong probability that we're going to get a pullback here. And there it happened again. Even bigger. They run on NinjaTrader. We only develop for the better trading platforms. Um, and in fact, we used to develop for several. And they couldn't keep up with what NinjaTrader can do. We're able to do so much more with NinjaTrader that we we really only uh, develop for NinjaTrader anymore. So here's the cool thing about NinjaTrader. It's free. You can trade any, any other broker with any other um, order entry that you want. And use the free charting for NinjaTrader. So it's really kind of cool that it's free. So, I mean, I could just show you these all day long. So here it is. There's the basic rock star trade setup. We're going to look, at, look for a breaking out of a channel. Here's the channel, right? And we're looking for a strong approach towards support and resistance. We haven't really talked about support and resistance other than the bouncing ball thing. But we're going to look for a strong approach, meaning we're going to look for a strong breakout with substantially bigger bars than what happened in the, in the previous, you know, so many bars. We're looking for the momentum bars to go from a dark color to a lighter color. Now, on Saturday, I'm going to show you some options to this, okay? How to tune this particular set of rules right here to your trading risk tolerance levels. You don't have to do it the way I do it to have a successful trading system. So I, I wanted to not make this a, a real long event today. So we'll do it on Saturday. So price hits support resistance, and we get a speed tick. All right? That means that this bar is very likely being manipulated. All right? Again, more tuning on Saturday. The next bar opens five ticks or less from that resistance. And then it has a rock star indicator above it. I'll short that one every single time, okay? And I'm going to place a limit order if I'm a new trader. Um, eventually, you can work your way up to marketing into that, and we can talk about that on Saturday. We'll talk about other ways of uh, entering the trades on Saturday and how to tune that. All right, so this is this is basically what he was talking about. We've got uh, three different specials for you. We've got our brain boost and academic. If you want to get kind of started slow, if you want all of the educational material that we have, we have also a new um, mentoring program. We have a, a group mentoring program, peer mentoring program. Uh, we have our fast forward education. Um, you get uh, unlimited trade room access. You get all of our add-ons that we that we created. Basically, you get everything. It's it's a one and done kind of thing. 
that's our Einstein package. Now, we know a lot of people, we hear this a lot, like, oh, I've invested so much in these other packages and these other things, and they haven't worked, and I'd like to do this, but, you know, I just don't have, you know, I, I've spent so much, I'm, I just don't have the confidence. We'll actually talk to Connor, and we'll actually, you know, give you credit for some of that towards uh, even a, a bigger price reduction. Okay, so there's the link. Connor also put it in the chat here. Let us know if you have any questions at support at theintentionaltrader.com or come on Saturday. It's best to come Saturday because I'm going to fill in a lot of these gaps. So on Saturday, we'll have a full question and answer period. But I don't want to hold everybody up today. If you are interested in, in uh, go ahead and, and investing today and get started with us, I've got some time today and some time set aside tomorrow to help people with installations. I will actually come on your computer, help you set up everything. Even if you don't have NinjaTrader, I can, I'll help you install NinjaTrader. I'll help you get a... Um, a demo data feed, uh, get the indicators all set up, set up your template, set up a workspace for you. I'll do all of this for you, um, for the people that want to do the Einstein program. So uh, I do have some time set up today and tomorrow for that if you want some help. It's pretty self-explanatory. It, it's easy to set up on your own if you're comfortable with using computers. But a lot of people aren't. So just let us know, support at theintentionaltrader.com. And everybody have a great rest of your afternoon, and we'll see you all on Saturday.